So as promised, I am going to show you how I made the Gary shirt. And I'll also show you how I made the pants in a separate video, in case you don't want to watch it. So I always pick out a pattern with a small print. And then this one I use, I'm going to use for the pants. It's kind of like a tie-dye thing, so I think it goes well with the 60s and 70s. So this is the material I'm gonna use for the shirt. There's just two pieces to the pattern. And I think I have enough material here. So you're gonna cut one of the back and then two of the front pieces. So I double it up. I just cut both of those at once, makes it much easier. And I pin down my patterns it's just easier for me <laughs> to hold it still. Everything seems to move on me. It's even hard for me just to put the pins in and not have the material move and bunch up. So I pin it down and you can find this if you just type in Google Gary's shirt, uh, top or dawn, just put in a couple of words like that. There's only, and put in pattern as well, but there's only one out there for Gary that I can find. So, I got this, and at the end, I'm, I'll show you a picture with the doll laying on it, show you, showing you how you can just easily draw it yourself and make one if you can't find it. So I'm cutting out the pattern with fabric scissors, and it doesn't have to be super, super neat. These are the two front halves of the shirt. So the sleeves look really fat and big, but trust me, you want to keep everything exactly big like this because when we sew it up, you're going to see it just fits just right, really. So I try and match the thread as close to the medium color as I can. Like that kind of matches the pattern, but I want to find something more for the mid color. So as I look around, I have a few browns, but I decided on one that ended up matching really well. So I want my stitches to not be as obvious at all. Okay, so here's how you do the collar. Okay, so here's how you do that collar. You're gonna fold in one third of the shirt and just press it down with your finger, your material usually. Now see how I'm pulling it back on a triangular fold. So I just made the collar, that's the collar. I made the triangle. So you can see again, fold this over and then fold that triangle and then press it. So now I have the collar basically made. So what I'm gonna do is pin it in place so it doesn't move, because I'm not going to sew that seam down. There's gonna be a real easy way. We don't even have to sew that seam. So I'm gonna keep it like that, and I'm gonna do both sides. So I'll show you again. Fold over one third of the shirt. Then flip it over. Put that folded under and then flip back a triangular corner. See? Now there is your collar. And it is so easy to make. So I'm gonna show you how to sew it now. You don't have to sew that seam. I'm gonna pin this one in place. Then you're gonna put good side to good side, right? So the outer fabric to the outer fabric of the back of the shirt. And I'm gonna sew the shoulder, the top of the shoulders together. Taking the back piece, the yeah, the back piece. <laughs> and I'm gonna line up the sleeves. And you'll see it comes just perfectly to where you have the little indent there for the back of the neck. So line everything up. 
And then we're gonna stitch the top shoulder together with that quarter inch allowance. It's really not a quarter inch for Don Dolls, it's more like an eighth of an inch. The first thing I'm gonna do is the seams. Now these seams show on the outside. So the easiest thing to do with these, what I like to do is use glue. Because when you stitch it, I like as few stitches as possible showing on the outside of the shirt. And I didn't do this on the other one, the one that I made for um, Ron. So this one I'm going to do it on. Now you can sew it if you want to, but I am gonna use the glue. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-glue all the sleeves on all three pieces. So I'm gonna do both sleeves on this shirt, and then I'm gonna do uh, the sleeves on each of the other pieces. So this glue dries really well too if you're using a thin fabric. So this fabric isn't super thick. If you're using corduroy or velvet, no. You've gotta clip it and clamp it down and wait for it to dry, but this, dries so quickly. It's so easy to do. And I wouldn't do it in a critical spot that's gonna have a lot of pull on it, but just hemming stuff for the sleeves, it's an excellent way to save time. So I decided to add a second pin to really hold it still. So I don't have to worry about it slipping as I'm sewing. So I do sew this. I don't use any kind of glue here because we're gonna turn it inside out and really need that seam to be secure. Plus, you really don't see the stitching, it's on the inside. So I start at the corner and I do a back stitch to make it kind of strong. And I'll go through and come back the other way. And now I'm gonna like jump ahead a little. I'm gonna do a whole, I don't know, 16th or an eighth there, probably a 16th. And then I'm gonna go back behind the stitch and come out. So it's a back stitch. Then I'm gonna go forward. Oh wait, I just did the back stitch there, sorry. <laughs> which direction I was doing it. So I'm jumping ahead now and then going back for the back stitch. Then jump ahead and then go back. Okay, so here I wanna use up the thread that's left on my needle, but it's not really enough if I keep tying the knots at the end. It really uses up a lot of thread to do that. So what I'm gonna do is show you how sometimes if you don't wanna tie the knot at the end, you can just simply do this. So I'm pulling through. And I'm gonna pull right to the end and leave just a little bit hanging out. Then I'm gonna push that down, hold it, and come up on the side of it with the needle. Don't pull too tight here. And then I go right in on the other side of it, pull it back through, and then come back one more time on the so other side of it and pull it through. And now it should be pretty tight and I can just start stitching forward. So now I can finish the other shoulder. And that way I don't waste that thread because I don't like re threading my needle to tell you the truth. I can barely see it. <laughs> so I try and use up as much as I can before I have to pull it through a second time. Okay, so now I've got both uh, sides sewn on. So I'm gonna just show you what it looks like so you can see the uh, collar. And then what I do at this point is do the neck. Now on the last shirt I made for Ron, I sewed it, which was a pain because it's just a tiny little area. So I'm gonna use the glue this time. <laughs> and just glue that. So all you do is glue down that little piece that's the back collar. It's so simple. And it's so much easier than 
that way they do with Barbie clothes where you try and cut all the little things and pull the flaps over and sew them. I like this so much better. Don doll clothes are actually a lot easier to make than Barbie. Okay, so now you turn it back and we're gonna do the sleeves or actually the underarm part. And so you're just gonna tack all the way down until you get to about an eighth of an inch from the end and that's leaving room for that hem that you're gonna make the bottom. Okay, so I've sewed on both sides and now it's time to turn it inside out. So you don't leave it that way to do the hem. So it's kind of hard sometimes to pull the sleeves through. Uh, you can use a dowel or something to push it through, but get it all the way out so you have the right shape of the sleeves. Okay, so now I have the uh, hem, I'm trying to push it down. So I just kind of start to turn it down all the way around. And when I get to where the two pieces were sewn together, I push it over to one side, lay it flat, and then bend it down. And then as you're doing each section, push it really hard with your fingernails and just get it to kind of sort of lay down. It's not gonna, it's not like an iron or anything, but it helps and you can do it. You can just really press hard on the edge of the material and it stays down. So I just kind of push it with my fingernails. Same thing on this side, just push that flap, lay it sideways, and then bend that whole mess over. And then you just gotta make sure it stays folded that way as you're sewing it. So as I go along sewing each section, I work a little bit ahead with my fingers like this and keep pressing it down and making sure it's in place as I sew, but I like to sew this hem all the way across. That's why I don't sew it first before I put it together. I sew it last. That way it's nice and continuous. Now remember, this is a seam that's gonna show. So I'm gonna do the back stitch again, but the important thing is that I'm gonna go through and then I'm gonna come in real close on the side that's gonna show. So right next to where you came out with your stitch, you wanna go right back in. Now, if you did this all the way across, it would take forever. We're only doing it on the side that shows. So after I put it in right back, then I jump ahead on this side. So I'll go up like an eighth of an inch on this side. But then again, when I get to that side that's gonna to show to everybody, I want the stitch to be really uh, small and not very noticeable, so I'm gonna come back right behind where I put it through. And then when I get on the inside, that's where I jump ahead and get a li little more traction <laughs> in my sewing. So I'm just gonna do that all the way across and I will come back and show you when I get to the point of that flap. Okay, so I'm at the flap, so it's folded down, and then I fold it over, so it's like double here. And I'm gonna come up through it all, all the layers, and it's hard to push through. And then go right back. So I'm gonna do all these stitches close together here because I wanna put about four stitches in that pile. I wanna make sure it's really strong and doesn't you know, hang down in the back or show. So, and I don't know where my thimble is, so I push on my healing mat. <laughs> See, I'm going right back through it. I'm really making sure I get four stitches back and forth in that area so that it stays together really well.
So I grabbed one of my Gary dolls and this is one I ordered online. The one I have from childhood, I keep him in his original clothes. This is the outfit he came with. Uh, this is definitely not made for <laughs> Topper Don Gary dolls. Um, so it is made by somebody. It says made in China, but uh, I don't like this outfit at all. So I'm glad to have something new for him. Uh, these pants too, they're too short, too tight. I am glad to have another pair of shoes for him. Those are cool, but I am glad to get rid of these as well. So I like to put the shirt on the doll before I put the snap on. I want to make sure it's in the place I want it. So I put it on him, pull it together and just flap it over a little bit and bring it down to the end of the collar. So right there where the collar comes to a point, that's where I want to put the snap. It looks right on him. And so I will get my snap. Okay, so I'm gonna put the indented side on the left and I'm gonna have the right flap over the left because I'm right-handed. So it's easier for me to snap it and unsnap it. So I'm gonna do this right on the doll so I don't mess up and get it too low or too high. And these little things sometimes are hard to hold in place. Now remember, though it's going on the top on this side, you wanna come up from the bottom with your needle and thread so that the knot that you put in your thread doesn't show. So I'm gonna try and hold it in place and poke it up from the inside. And then I just go over to the next hole. There's four holes in these snaps. Go back through and come up again in the same hole I went through the first time. So notice on the other side, the button is on the inside of the shirt. And so you wanna come up through the button this time with your knot, that way nothing shows. And you can fold it over. If you wanna put two snaps, you can, but I find that I really only need one. So now I have two of these little shirts and I like them a lot. I think they look very good. So I just wanna show you how to draw your own pattern. You can lay the doll down and draw this shape around them like a T, have it come to the thighs, have it go on the outside of the arms, and right outside the arms is your hem allowance, and have it stop at his neck. So it's pretty easy to draw this T type pattern for the back piece. So when you get to the front piece, you only need to draw one pattern, and it's basically the same shape, only it's one, it's two thirds. So you can see how it comes over, it has to come over that far because you want that big thick hem, which makes your collar so easy to make. So you can see here, it's just drawing almost the whole shirt again, except you can see where it stops. It leaves like one third. So you're not gonna draw the left sleeve. And you don't need to do one for the right and the left. You just do both pieces and make sure you turn it the opposite way or double the fabric like I did when I cut it. And that way, you know, when you bend it over, you end up getting both the left and the right side. So it's not hard to make this pattern yourself and you can do all kinds of stuff with it.